Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Today is perfume review day time, or time of the day, or time of the week. And uh, since it's still summer and hot and warm, and it's very difficult to breathe because sometimes you have a feeling you're on the street and just the air is not moving at all, um, we use perfumes to help ourselves survive and to surround ourselves with not just the stinky odor that some people emanate from themselves when and whilst they're on the street surrounding us or in the subways, metros, cars, wherever, waiting rooms. So when it comes, when um, the shit hits the fan, literally, uh, I go in the direction of choosing something that, as I've said in oh so many reviews before, or perfume reviews before, I choose something that kind of covers me up, envelops me, and serves me as a protection shield, not necessarily because it's such a good and pleasant fragrance, but also to kick other people away from me. Because if I smell too much and too intense of a certain perfume, people are not going to come too close, which is good. Because in this heat, I don't want people coming too close. And this particular perfume, and you're going to be probably surprised that I'm saying this, but this particular perfume that suits this purpose to me, also Coco Noir, but it's Coco Mademoiselle. And it's Coco Mademoiselle in its first ever rendition, which is the Eau de Parfum. In fact, Coco Mademoiselle came out in 2001, uh, was made by Jacques Polge, who is the head perfumer since 1978 or 79 for Chanel. It came out in 2001 as Eau de Parfum, followed by Eau de Toilette in 2002, and then several years later, followed by the Pure Extract or Parfum. Sorry, oh god, okay, gee. Uh, I have also, as you have seen probably, um, or not, I don't know, uh, re-dyed my hair, so the roots are gone, thank god. Uh, but it does take me, you know, approximately seven to eight weeks before I can recolor them, so I always have to pass through a phase where I have these like disgusting black things coming on. But I just get used to them, so bear with me. <laughs> what you do for blondness? <laughs> Anyway, this is the Coco Mademoiselle. So, what did we say? Floral fragrance for women. But, as we all know, to me, women or men makes no difference. Does this match your chemistry? Does it match your desire to smell or sense yourself in a certain way? If it does, that's the perfume for you. No matter if you are male, female, no gender at all, cat, dog, alien, rock, whatever you are. If you like it, it's yours. So uh, Jacques Poche created this perfume, which for a certain period of time even outbeat the sales of number five, believe it or not. So Coco Mademoiselle passed a certain period in its existence till now where it dominated the markets. Now, we all know that Chanel number no. five is the biggest, most selling perfume out there. Uh, it's the best seller. It's number one. This one outbeat it. The only perfume that outbeat number five was Coco Mademoiselle for a certain period of time. At the moment, I think number five is back on top. Maybe not. But uh, also rumors of reformulations. 2014, uh, Chanel has reformulated most of their scents, including Coco Mademoiselle. Many, 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 many people are commenting and writing in reviews that uh, their Coco Mademoiselle smells different now, more bland, less intense. Um, you know, it just fades out immediately or instantaneously after putting it on or just half an hour later. However uh, be the case, whatever be the case, I don't know uh, if that's the fact or not because I bought the 35 milliliter Eau de Parfum back in 2010. And as you can see, I use it very sparingly. I use it very sparingly because I have a love-hate relationship with this perfume, similar to my love-hate relationship with Gardenia by Chanel. Coco Mademoiselle is a complicated scent because I want to love it. And I love it. Like, I just taking, you know, the, the lid off and just smelling it out of, out of whatever is left there. And I haven't, like, sprayed it for a long time and it's still so intense and beautiful. I love it. Out of the box, I love it. On my clothes, I love it. On my skin, however, it turns very pissy and annoying and cloying and just not good. I don't know, maybe it's this Chypre, Chypre, I never know how to pronounce it, Chypre, let's just call it Chypre. Uh, it, 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 it just gives something off on my skin that just does not work for me or the way I perceive it. So I have to use it very sparingly and usually just on the clothes. But for the sake of reviewing this baby for you guys, because a lot of you have been asking me to do Coco Mademoiselle, we shall do it on the skin, and I'm also going to put a little bit here as well. But 
we're gonna do the skin thing. So let's go. Two sprays, two whiffs, and one on the garment. All right. By the way, the garment is um, Yoshi Yamamoto Y3 piece. This is made in metal and, and glass. So if you were to take a flash of this thing, it would just like illuminate like 3M material completely. And in this heat, metal is actually pretty soothing on my skin, I have to say, better than cotton. Who would go figure? Anyway, let's see how it smells on metal. Mm. <laughs> I guess it's okay. On my skin, now right off the bat, when I put it on, it smells good. Unlike many other Chanel perfumes that have those aldehydes that kind of sparkle and cut through you at the beginning, this one is much more pleasant in the beginning than it is towards the end on me. Uh, let's go through the notes. Top notes are bergamot, orange blossom, mandarin orange, and orange. Middle notes, ilang ilang, Turkish rose, jasmine, and mimosa. Base notes are vetiver, vanilla, opoponax, white musk, patchouli, and tonka bean. Now that tonka bean and that opoponax in the um, base notes, in the base notes, uh, in the base note, no, in the base notes, sorry, is very reminiscent of Poison by Christian Dior because the opoponax in Poison, also the, all the beans and, and the musks are, are very, very similar. There's, there's a certain similarity between these two. And in the reformulated version of Poison, and if you haven't seen my review on Poison yet, check it out in the card section up above. Um, the reformulated version of Poison also gives off something in its dry down that it doesn't really fit to my skin. Uh, however, the 80s version of it is just mesmerizing till the, till the bitter end, and Poison does know how to get bitter from time to time. So does this, this one here. Um, I'm still loving it a lot. It's still really good on me. Maybe also the heat. I don't know. Maybe it's the summer and all the extravagant heat out there that kind of helps it blend better with my chemistry. Because in winter time, it just doesn't work. It, ter it turns, as I said, pissy and bitter on me. So, but... Uh, as you already know from other reviews of mine, the bergamot usually doesn't stay on my skin. It evaporates immediately. Orange blossom, I don't feel it already anymore. Mandarin orange and orange. They're all kind of gone. I'm sensing the ilang ilang. I'm sensing the rose. I can't sense the difference between a Turkish rose and a rose. I sense the jasmine. I don't sense mimosa. I mean, how do mimosa smell? I know, I mean, like there's mimosas growing outside, you know. Uh, so what is it, like April, March? They don't smell like much, but anyway. It smells very grassy to me, uh, very poisony, as in poison by Christian Dior, not as in uh, venom, and uh, sweet. There's the patchouli. It's a sweet chuli, like a lot of people have called it already, and that 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 is omnipresent and omnipotent. It's something that gives it that bubble gummy touch as well, that sweet candy Barbie touch. However, for me, this scent would have uh, beat. The, the, would have been more Barbie-ish had it had something a bit more cold. Because guess what, people? Barbie is a cold-hearted bitch. Because she's always like, mm. you know, almost, she looks almost like Britney Spears looks when people pay for the meet and greet. And then like you take a picture next to Britney and Britney has the, that kind of frozen look, like a bit scared. That That's the look Barbie has in her face, especially the 80s Barbie. She's like very like, and, um, so there's something cold about her, or distant, or absent. This one is very warm and present. So if you wanted to call this more bubblegummy and barbie and pinky, or like a pink, there should be more blue hues in there. There should be more warmth. You see, the liquid is kind of rosy, peachy, rosy. It's all meant to be bubblegummy, peachy, rosy, and girly. But, it, you know, they should have added that touch of coldness in there. I don't know what ingredient it should have been, but it lacks that abstract distance for it. For me to be able to call this a Barbie-ish type of smell. Indeed, it's not. And uh, the color kind of does suit it up to a certain degree. Uh, the liquid and the kind of the, this, you know, this is kind of a glittery, there's like glitter in this white. It's very, very, very shimmering, light, light, light shimmer to the white cap. Of course, you can't see it now, probably. But, um, but it's there. You know... Smells the same on both clothes and arm. 
to be honest with you. Um, I'm thinking. Whenever I breathe it in, or well, whenever I inhale it, I have the feeling that it it literally like comes inside, you know, and 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 totally invades and pervades and permeates all your inner tracts. Um, and I have the feeling I have inhaled a, a warm, like a twirl of cotton candy that is very tiny. And it comes in, and as it comes in, it just like blows up inside of you, but it's very soothing and balsamic in a way. So once it's inside, you have this kind of full on warmth permeating your body from the inside completely. So instead of being like many scents where you have the feeling that you're kind of on a cloud and you're floating in on, on the cloud and it makes you feel so great and tingly and tangly, this one does the opposite to me personally. I have the feeling everything is kind of come inside of me and from the inside it blows up doesn't turn you into something fat or crazy or Jabba the Hutt looking, but rather it's just an emotional thing. It makes you feel very warm inside. It's very balsamic, very soothing. Which kind of contrary to popular Chanel belief is contrary to Chanel in a way, because usually the Chanel things are a bit more bitey and zesty. Chanel perfumes meaning things. And now it's, it's already kind of turning to that Something that I kind of don't like that much uh, on me personally. Uh, something that smells artificial. Tricky. It's a tricky, tricky perfume. You have to dose it correctly. It's, I don't know, it's like, it's like you're traveling in a distant land that you've never been, where you've never been before and you don't speak the language. But every like third person you encounter wears the scent. And trust me, there was a time, and I think it's still happening in many cities across the world, every third person will have it and will wear it. And you recognize it immediate, immediately, like off the bat, you know it's Coco Mademoiselle. So it's like you're going to a foreign country and you don't speak the language, but once, but you use this perfume. And so you feel a bit out of out of place, out of space, you're a bit hesitant to buy things, to buy food because you don't know how to communicate. Are people going to trick you for the price, for this, for that? You don't know what's going on. And yet, from time to time, you catch a whiff of this scent. And all of a sudden, you feel relieved. You're like, okay, no, I understand where I am. Oh, no, okay, there's other people like me. We, we know what, what's going on here. People will understand me. It's all going to be okay. Um, so actually I wanted to say something negative, but I'm turning it into something positive, which is not that bad at the end of the day, because I'm kind of rethinking the judgment of this perfume as I'm going along here, bear with me. I do have the feeling that it does give me that soothing feeling of recognizing something that is already out there and that other people have already experienced. So it's like sharing an experience. It's almost something ritual, you know, like a ritual that bonds uh, tribes. And yes, we are a huge tribe. That's what humanity is. We're just a huge big tribe with all our DNA patterns that are still within us that still carry all the roots of our ancestors while they were still writing, uh, drawing, uh, hunting scenes on caverns um, and caves. Uh, we still have that DNA pattern in us. It's like this perfume awakens that pattern and triggers it in a way just because it's so over potent and present out there in society. And that it gives you that feeling, even though you don't understand anything about the person you're seeing, about the country, or in about the language that they speak. Once you sense this, you have the feeling you understood. And that feeling of understanding, I think, is the key to the success of this perfume. Because it has something very, very, very recognizable. Something soothing. Something that makes you aware of the fact that you're not alone in this world. That everything will be fine, no matter what happens it's all going to be good. And then, of course, we have Kira Knightley. I don't know if she still is, but for quite a long time, Kira Knightley was the face of um, Coco Mademoiselle. Uh, for a certain period of time, it was uh, Vanessa Paradis as well. But I think Kira Knightley kind of beat her to it and has been the face of Mademoiselle, Coco Mademoiselle for a longer time. Kira Knightley also gives us that kind of soothing look. You know, she's not aggressive. She's not transgressive. She's not some crazy chick going out there and just doing whatever she wants. No, she feels like the type of daughter you would want your 
your your your your kid to marry if you come from some like good family you know you have the feeling okay it's safe you know my son can date her it's safe it's all gonna be good there's gonna be no aggressions everybody around them is just gonna be so happy for them so in a way it's over the top positive and good and good and good and I like when perfumes also trigger the opposite of that this one is kind of everything is fine type of scent which is perfect for so many people for me as you can see from 2010 to today, this is the amount that I used up of a 35 milliliter, the smallest bottle in existence of Eau de Parfum out there. Now, if it's true that it has been reformulated and if that means indeed that this perfume smells less intense, maybe I should try it because maybe it's the over intensity that kind of the dry down doesn't work on me. Don't know. Well, I'll have to go out and try it out in some perfume shop. But I do have that poison thing, except it's lacking the plum, the plum touch that poison has. You know, this one doesn't have it. So we're in this faraway country. I don't know why, but I'm feeling Morocco or Turkey. So it's either North Africa or we're going towards, you know, the Orient in a way. And we're just like leaving Europe. This is the type of scent this perfume gives me. It doesn't make me feel Paris. It doesn't make me feel France. It, it rather makes me feel traveling, exiting the core of Chanel, of the mother Chanel, and kind of leaving, you know, and going elsewhere and discovering other realities. Uh, and question, is it worth it to discover these other realities? Answer, yes. By all means, do try it because there must be a reason why this perfume is so popular. It's not just because of the advertisement. I mean, Chanel advertises to, to death all of their perfumes except for the like, exclusives because that's a different concept. It's like the anti-commercial strategy, which is also a marketing strategy, believe it or not. Um, so it's not just the, the over-saturated promotion of it. And I have to say it's been less lately. But it's really the composition. Jacques Paul's really nailed it in a way because it's very recognizable and soothing so try it out just for the sake of that at least because and let me know what you think because i know a lot of people love coco mademoiselle and as i said at the beginning i want to love it i want to try to love it and i try to love it over and over again and i'll try till my dying day because i love my chanel there you have it guys thank you so much for watching give me a thumbs up on this video if you liked it share and let the community grow and subscribe to my channel if you wish to see more i love you all so much thank you so much for subscribing thank you so much for everything because it's an amazing roller coaster ride and you're giving me like the best vibes of my life thank you so so much for that i'll see you tomorrow love you bye